Move your legs. Carol, move your legs. Ripples on a dark pool. A voice calling from the mouth of a cave. I see your feet, it insists. Now move your legs. I swim toward the command in slow motion. My head plods to turn the words into some kind of action. At last it connects. I kick my legs. OK, now get out. It's dad's voice barking, get out. My arm, it's wrenched behind me. I reach for my shoulder. Something hard is in the way, something heavy, pressing. My arm is gone underneath the pressing. It won't pull free. Carol, get out now, get out. Daddy, I can't. Light shining in my eyes, a shock of white hair behind it, a voice with a thick Boston accent asking questions. What's my name? How old am I? What day is this? I paddle toward it with stronger strokes. Am I in a car? I ask. You're in a plane, the voice answers. There's been an accident. How long have I been lying outside in the dark? A fistful of wet dirt, the stink of gasoline, soaking my hair and clothes. It's on my skin. I taste it when I close my lips to swallow. I'm in a plane? My mind breaks the surface, gasping. There's been an accident! A hatless man in uniform is pointing a flashlight at me. It's Sunday. We were flying home from Maine. There are dry leaves everywhere, rasping under the heels of my boots. My name is Carol. I'm 16. My arm, I wail. I can't get out. Muffled bellowing of orders. The man crawls backwards out of the plane to talk with someone. He brings back more questions. Can I feel my fingers? Can I move my trapped hand? What is it touching? Can I reach any part of that arm with my free hand? And then, while we mark time, what grade am I in at the high school? What subjects do I like? Does Mrs. Graham still teach social studies? When he runs out of things to ask, he takes my free hand and assures me it will be all right. They're going to get me out. Deep needles of pain gouge up and down my arm as the pressure suddenly releases. Blood lunges from my fingertips. Somebody somewhere grabs my numb hand and holds on with a too tight grip. I tell my hatless man I can feel someone squeezing my hand, and he shouts to the ones outside. A spontaneous cheer erupts. My man tells me they have used the jaws of life to pry the crumpled nose of the plane apart. I don't know what the jaws of life is. I imagine the giant skeletal head of a Tyrannosaurus Rex spitting me out of its mouth. We've got a stretcher, he says. We're going to lift you, nice and easy. I protest. I can call out by myself. I'm too much for them to carry. He looks me full in, the, full in the face and promises me one last time that everything will be all right. 